Welcome to another episode of A Closer Look. Thank you for joining us. With the wet season lingering, the country is experiencing continuous heavy downpour that resulted in flooding in some parts of the country. Unfortunately, for some areas, landslide. In this unfortunate turn of events, six districts of Simbu province had been hit by landslides simultaneously on the 12th of this month. The landslide is labelled as the second biggest natural disaster that has affected the province since the 1997 drought. Simbu's six districts includes Chuave, Gumini, Karawagi, Kundiawa Gembog, Karamui Salt Nomane, and Sinasina Yongumol, all of which suffer the impacts of the foreboding flood and the merciless landslide. Gumini district alone has reported around 27 landslides in all. Provincial member for Simbu, Noah Kool, earlier this week during his appeal to the national government and responsible authorities, gave this morbid update. Uh, from the report itself, in the province, we've got 24 deaths. 24 deaths. One third of these is still buried and not recovered yet. Three are hospitalized. They were buried and they need to pull them out and uh, brought them into uh, the hospital. One is from uh, Salt Nomani. They had to pull them out, cross the river on tube, flooding river on tube, walk the child all the way to the nearest airport, and then someone had to go in, charter a plane, go in, fly them out to Goroka, and then into Kundiawa for medical attention. Foot bridges are washed away. Power poles are washed away. The roads and the bridges are also washed away. The houses are washed away. The food gardens are washed away. Coffee gardens are either covered in debris or washed away. People are homeless now and they are displaced. A lot of people are homeless. We've got to confirm the numbers. Mr. Cole went on to elaborate on the current status of the people of Simbu province, a community trying to navigate its way through this ordeal. So now the people are staying in uh, makeshift tents, cell houses, like house cries, huh? mourning their uh, loved ones, or either mourning over there, where they want to get their food, how are they going to build their house. How is the services, government services going to reach them? See. At the same time, we've got government services cut off. So we've got three secondary schools affected because the road and bridges are cut off. We've got five high schools. We've got health centers, government services. They are all affected. So I don't know. They might close the school anytime because of the food rations. My provincial government has committed 2.3 million already for relief arrangements. I think the district members are also committing money, but I can't speculate on that. And they are also going to their own districts. But as a province, we've already organized the emergency committee Disaster Committee, Technical Working Committee, on day one, we make arrangements. They are going out there getting reports. The reports that I'm presenting to you, I have, uh, they, they were the reports they brought in. He further noted that a priority for the province is to keep its schools functioning. A 
similar concern raised by Sina Sinayongumul MP Karen Gakua. Rain, uh, landslide, our problems we discuss in here. I'm affecting plan the old school through. Now, uh, me play a province, me play a plan the investment in education, in infrastructure, in students sitting out in the area of the province. Uh, like district law, me, em law, uh, Swai High School, backside lo Kunange, and then uh, uh, be my high school, lo Yongumuk Basis. Uh, this is like kind of institutions, na plan the primary schools, na elementary schools through all staff. We have to find a way to keep all those schools up, schools operational. The province had recently received relief supply from the provincial government with the assistance from the Defence Ministry's chopper to deliver food supplies to affected communities. Although devastating the natural dilemma is to symbol at this time, it is needless to say that such a disaster should be anticipated and budgeted for. This, however, seems an additional concern for the province. My province is facing the natural disaster. And at this time, and at this time, we don't have sufficient funds. I am only credited one million of my PSIP. No infrastructure funds. At the same time, our province is a disadvantaged province. We get only 5 million kina a year. And it comes in months, monthly installments. To date, the 2.3 million I am using, that comes from the rollover funds for education infrastructure, or infrastructure for roads and bridges. Uh, actually, the magnitude of the disaster that is happening in the province is quite big. But as I mandate, the governor is not sleeping, sleepless night, working around the clock to at least uh, help and bail out these people. Uh, so it's not a, it's a planned program, it's not budget, but in future, governor is planned to set some money and set the office for a natural disaster. That's the plan the administrator and the governor and the, the office itself are working around the clock to set an office to take care of uh, anything that is happening in the future. The heavy downpour also took a toll on the lowland areas of the country as reports from several centers flooded in of submerged villages. As such, the despair seen in the East Sipic province along the Sipic River and the coastal areas of Oro province and Gulf. With the country known for being located in the heart of the Ring of Fire, where natural disasters are prevalent, PNG's emergency preparedness to mitigate losses and effective response for assistance to victims of natural disasters are paramount. We now take a quick break, and when we return, we will delve into the success story of bulb onion farming in Asaro of Eastern Highlands Province. Welcome back to A Closer Look. Farming of bulb onions is paving its way into the market in the Highlands region, as many local farmers are looking into cash crops that pay well and require less work. Reporter Francisca Anania compiled the talks on preservation methods for bulb onions between Fresh Produce Development Agency and British American Tobacco that are paying off as more solar dryers are being installed on selected local bulb onion farms in the region. One of such was witnessed on Thursday in Nibuka village in the Eastern Highlands province. Solar dryers are becoming popular in Papua New Guinea's agriculture sector as more people resort to small-scale farming and SMEs as a source of income for livelihood. On behalf of the Fresh Produce Development Agency, the board, management and staff, the hard-working farmers right throughout Papua New Guinea to cut this ribbon to declare this um, solar dryer is supported by British-American tobacco to be used. 
a bad in partnership between the British American Tobacco and Fresh Produce Development Agency was established in 2023 with the target of setting up 50 bulb onion solar dryers in the Highlands region, a technology designed to harness solar energy and used to remove excess water from farm fresh bulb onions for preservation after harvest and on the market. The goal behind the initiative between BAT and FPDA is to help local farmers supply quality onions consistently to urban markets in the country, reducing imports from other countries. FPDA CEO Mark Warino explains more. Currently there's a uh, gap of uh, 5,000 tons of uh, uh, onion, which is about uh, 16 million Kena, which is the import bill. This money is going out of the country and we want to close that gap. Part of the strategy is to have the technology rolled out and so that the quality improves. The time taken to cure the Balbanian usually is um, four to five to six weeks, but through the use of the technology, it is only three days. And that is remarkably uh, changed the way we have been curing Balbanian. Known for its donations and sponsorships to many projects in PNG, British American Tobacco is now venturing into the agri sector, securing its very first partnership with FPDA, confirming 1 million kina to assist local farmers in the bulb onion business. Head of External Affairs of BAT, George Panao, shares more. So, time to go forward now. I'm Upload this partnership now. I'm the local local area. But inside the agriculture, inside the local technology, and inside the way impact can go direct long all papa mama lo ground now begin you blame your stuff me will not like him plan the middle man to us middle men are making the money that come to lose 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 you give him 100 kina and have you seem to get them low kind of them me will like 100 kina come down but 99 or kind of them must come up them low Located in Daulo district, about a 30 minutes drive west of Goroka town is where farmer James Ambios bulb onion solar dryer was launched on Thursday the 24th of March this year. Ambios shared that before the solar dryer was installed on his farm, the onions took six weeks to dry off before selling. Hence, it now takes only three to four days to dry before getting to the market. He stated this partnership with FPDA and BAT has helped him a lot. I use him own little family blow me one place I work in big plow work. But then um, since you know, 2023 last year, he came to 24 now. Time American British tobacco building this solar dryer. I look him important blow in here. And I got big plow master of him and life blow me him sinister. Oh, get a little workload where Mr. Walking law 16 coming up now. Yeah, I'm cutting big plow up now. During the launching, Secretary for the Department of Agriculture and Livestock, Dr. Sergi Ban, stated that in the government's Vision 2050 and MTDP4 goals 2024 to 2027, agriculture commercialization is strategic priority area number one. Dr. Ban stated that the agri sector currently contributes about 7 to 8 billion kina to the economy. However, the government aims to grow this to 30 billion kina by 2030, and initiatives such as the Bulb Onion Solar Dryer contribute to this growth. Meanwhile, President for Eastern Highlands Farmers Association Wilson Thompson urge the local people to take farming seriously for their livelihood and in order to meet government targets. Time lo training plenty man through come come up but lo look out him man many lo place lilik man many look out him. 500 plus farmers have lost talents I think must be lo 600 or 700 but production is still down. Country need 150 ton. We are producing only 70 ton. Plenty time lo talk about black export but black export what is something? Currently, 20 solar dryers have been installed in the Highlands region of PNG. 
with nine in Eastern Highlands Province, three in Chimbu Province, four in the Western Highlands Province, and four in Jiwaka Province. BAT and FPDA are working towards setting up remaining 30 solar dryers by the end of 2024. Traditional sinsin, dances and the famous Asaro madmen were seen throughout the launching as the people expressed joy and hope that the Bob Onion Solar Dryer Project will be a source of income and development to the area. We take a quick breather now and when we return we will take a closer look at the milestone achievements of cricket in PNG. You're watching a closer look. Making a name for Papua New Guinea in the international sporting arena are the renowned Baramandis for men and Lewis for women. In this segment, we appreciate the gain in momentum for cricket in PNG, highlighting the Kumul Petroleum PNG Baramandis Asia Tour and Cricket PNG Lewa Zimbabwe and United Arab Emirates Tour, with a glimpse into the Isuzu T20 smash this year. Our reporter, Jonathan Sibona, with more on this story. Pride and a household name, PNG Baromandis, has set a benchmark after returning from a tour this year. One of the recent highlights is the Asia Tour that kicked off in Oman with five matches, including two one day international and three T20 matches. During the five games, the Baro side gave the host a good challenge, winning one ODI and one T20 match, but fell short by four wickets at the last T20 decider. Despite losing the Oman Tua, the eight-wicket victory in the T20 match was a plus for the Baras, Cricket PNG and the country, as the remarkable win was a breakthrough from a seven-year drought. It's gone miles into the sky, it's not going to get over the rope. Can a fielder get there? He can, and he's been dismissed. That is the most... After the conclusion of matches in Oman, more games were ahead of the PNG side as they continued with the tour to compete in the Hong Kong T20 Tri Series against the host Hong Kong and Nepal. The series, having three T20 matches long, gave no choice but forced Barras to play two matches against Nepal and Hong Kong on the same day. The first game against Nepal didn't go down well as expected, losing by 85 runs. Despite the loss, Barras managed to correct the mistakes and fired back, defeating Hong Kong in the second T20 Tri-Series match. With the pace set by bowling duo Cabo Amoria and Ale Nao, PNG side restricted the host Eli with several blows to the 10 wickets victory to meet Nepal again in the finals. With determination, PNG Baramandis made a strong return, defeating Nepal by 86 runs to be crowned kings. Kumul's Petroleum PNG Baramandis captain Asad Vala further emphasized on what motivated the team to win the finals against Nepal. Uh, Try to follow the process that the coach was speaking to us about that in the first game. We, we, we couldn't execute the skills really well uh, in the first game. We got outplayed by Nepal, but you know, in the second match, uh, the things that we spoke about before the game, uh, you know, we clicked and executed to to the best of our abilities and we got the win and gave us confidence and went into the final with, uh, against Nepal. Uh, we knew that you know, if we played our best cricket, it was going to be good enough for them to handle. So that's what we did in the final. Vala said the team will work hard and is looking forward for the 20 team ICC World Cup in West Indies. Yeah, f f first, first of all, is we're going to be the national players are going to be uh, taking part in the ICC Smash. Next study next Friday uh, for the next couple of weeks, for the next three weeks, uh, finals in on the 13th or 14th. So from there on, I think we had, we, we're going to be um, 
I've been mean, uh, one month training before we head off to the World Cup preparation where we'll go to West Indies, West Indies um, uh, three weeks early before the to season, the tournament, the World Cup starts, so to get some pre World Cup matches and some training and get climatized there before it starts. So. Also, making a name internationally, our PNG women team, Lewas, who were currently crowned queens after winning back to back in the Pacific Cup and are ranked 11 in the world. During a recent interview with this newsroom, Lewas coach David Drew emphasized on the tour. That's the team, it's obviously a privilege to be the coach of the, the Lewas. I'm very excited of what I've seen so far, especially over at the Pacific Cup. Um, some outstanding performances and a great fight back to win the final over there. So looking forward to seeing what can happen when we're in Zimbabwe in the UAE. The national team is currently on a tour to play against Zimbabwe and the United Arab Emirates and will return and participate in the Isuzu T20 Smash in the country. Obviously I'd like to thank Cricket PNG for the opportunity to take the girls away. Um, this is obviously a bit of a preparation phase at the moment. Playing uh, ODI cricket hasn't been something that the girls have done regularly, so looking forward to seeing how we go and then we have another tour later on in the year where we can really consolidate what we've learned from this tour. So uh, appreciate all your um, attendance and uh, yeah, the girls look forward to, um, to travelling over and representing PNG with pride. Through the support and partnership of Boroko Motors as the naming rights sponsor, Cricket PNG is set to host the Isuzu T20 Smash in Port Mosby. The competition comprises of four women and men teams, including Kesowaris, Mad Men, Mariners and Black Bears, and will commence on the 29th of this month. The Isuzu T20 Smash is a great lead-up for the elite cricketers who will represent Papua New Guinea internationally, with the Baramandis attending the 20-team ICC Men's T20 World Cup in West Indies, CLS Under-19 Women Team playing in Bali, Indonesia, and the Garamuts Under-19 Men to compete in Apia, Samoa this year, 2024. Cricket PNG CEO Richard Doan further emphasised on the tournament. Um, I just want to say a couple of things about the tournament itself. Um, a little bit of information. The men's, the men's tournament, the T20 Smash, um, again generously supported by Azuzu and Barocco Motors, starts on, on Good Friday afternoon, the 29th of March, and runs across the next three weekends with the final on the 13th of April. So that'll be a big day in the final on the 13th of April. Um, our women then return from uh, overseas and they come back and the women's competition starts on the 20th of April and then runs through to the finals on the 4th of May. So again, a great opportunity for the girls to, to have a great tour overseas, come back and, and play the Azusa T20 Smash. Cricket PNG CEO said that the first draft of players in each match in the men and women's teams have been completed with five Baramandis and four Garamuts players drafted in their respective men's team, five Lewas and four CLS in their respective women's team. Um, we're very lucky that the, uh, the whole competition will be broadcast on MTV um, with our partners Pigeon Productions, so that'll go um, on free-to-air TV across, across Papua New Guinea over the next six weeks. Uh, and also, um, it's going to be broadcast into India um, through the partner's fan code. So, um, yeah, great opportunity for us to promote the game um, in PNG and across the world and make PNG a much more visible cricket country. So, thanks very much for your time. I hope I haven't spoken too long, but uh, really exciting year for, um, for cricket PNG. Thank you. That's all we have for you on this episode of A Closer Look. Join us same time next week for another episode. On behalf of the entire team, thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening.